I'm going to go ahead and make the Dr. Shabazz and Allegra co-hosts. Allegra, you want to start us off? I sure will. Um, it is 6.01. Uh, look how timely we are um, on, what's today, Wednesday, September 7th. Um, and this is a meeting of the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee calling to order um, and pursuant to the chapter. No, oh, pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. See instructions below. Uh, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Uh, so welcome everybody. It looks like all of our pan, uh, participants in the committee are here. Um, I do not see Deborah or Freke. I don't know if we have to do the everybody here and see thing every every time if we do. You do. We? So Deborah do. is driving at the moment, okay. but she is with us. So if you could just uh, give her a, um, you know, hi, Deborah, can you hear us? That will suffice. Okay, perfect. Deborah, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Perfect. Can you yes, we can. Thank you. Um, Freke, can we hear you? Hear you. Perfect. We hear you. Um, D, D. Yes. Hello. Hello. I hear you. Um, Miss Pat. Yes. Perfect. Heard you. And Philip. Hello. That is all of us. Um, and how about Pat DeAngelis? Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, so first off, we will review the agenda. So we will start with announcements and approval of the 823 meeting minutes. Then we will have public comment, members reports, action and discussion items, which will focus around the ARPA funding and CDBG, which is Community Development Block Grant, um, as a potential funding source for the DEI department, youth and BIPOC centers, translation services, other services. And then we will also discuss the Victim Compensation Fund. And then we will discuss upcoming agenda items and meeting schedules. Any other topics that we did not reasonably anticipate 48 hours in advance of the meeting, and then we will adjourn. So we're you're going to have to table the minutes from 8-23-2022 to the 9-28 meeting. Okay. And so you'll get those Andes. I just they just need to be formatted. So Perfect. they I didn't have them ready. All right, thank you. Um, so we will not be approving those minutes tonight. Um, first off, does anybody have any announcements? So um, Allegra um, sent on our behalf as a committee a follow-up email to Lynn Greismer uh, for the town council that we did expect some response, of course, uh, to our letter. And we have received uh, no response from Lynn uh, as of yet. These aren't items that we're discussing uh, tonight. Uh, the next meeting uh, regards a, a follow up to the July 5th incident, but um, I'm just letting you all know that we did not receive uh, any word from Lynn officially. Um, this is Deborah. I yeah, see, I can't I can't do raise hand because I'm driving right now. Um, that was one of the things I didn't see that on the agenda in terms of like, you know, any kind of check in follow up in regards to this, in terms of what we might want to do in response to the fact that um, the town council hasn't responded we, I'm assuming I haven't heard anything whether the police have finished their investigation. So I mean, are we going to discuss any of this today, I didn't see it on the agenda. So okay. go ahead, alert. we're oh. sorry. Um, I think you might have already left the last meeting, Deborah, but we had discussed at the end of the last meeting when we changed the date to Wednesday that for the next two months we would meet twice a month because the budget season is 
going to start in November. And so that we would have this meeting tonight set aside to discuss um, budget implications and like the ARPA funds and CDBG. And then our meeting at the end of the month, we would discuss more of the um, the response to the July 5th incident. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess that's, yeah, because I wasn't on a meeting. So yeah, I mean, it makes sense to a certain degree, but I guess the only thing would be like, we need to kind of keep the pressure on. So I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, agreed. And I am showing Deborah, uh, please drive carefully, but I'm, I'm just showing the committee, the follow-up letter uh, drafted by Allegra um, asking, uh, you know, for some response, we wanted to follow up about the next steps and moving this work forward together. We hope we can return to a council meeting in October to discuss progress towards implementing the CSWG and CSSJC recommendations. And basically it's a repeat of what we asked for in, in the first letter. So uh, I guess let's hope that they respond by the next meeting, but we can also send word that this is something that, you know, is, is pretty important. Mm -hmm. um, we want some, uh, some follow up and, and them to uh, actually uh, consider what we've put forward. I see both Pats have their hands raised. Um, I don't know if Pat DeAngelis was going to respond directly to this scheduling and not hearing back from the town council yet, if, if that is the case. Yes, uh, thank you. I'm, um, if you could send me a copy of this email, I can bring it up at Monday's council meeting okay. uh, as part of the liaison report and ask when we're, will you get a response and why haven't you? If you want me to do that. Absolutely. It's up to you. Yes. Or, um, I do. <laughs> I, I yes. can Thank check you. in with the rest of the committee, <laughs> but I, I. Okay. Um, All right, so then if you would forward that email to me, that would be great. Thank you. Will do. Does anybody oppose to me for, forwarding the email? No. Thank you. All right, and, and Ms. Pat. So it's a quick announcement. Um, so the um, MS9 um, is what the, the youth that were involved uh, on July 5th are calling themselves. So some of the families have decided to write uh, a joint uh, narrative of what happened on July 5th instead of individuals. So I think between four and five families, uh, they're putting something together. And whenever it's ready, I will forward it to the uh, Human Rights Commission. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, I also had an announcement. It's a little bit in a different realm, but I just wanted to make everybody aware that next Tuesday, the Housing Trust is having a forum about affordable housing in Amherst. There is um, a new family housing development in the works um, on both Belchertown Road and um, the old East Street School, which is kind of right across the East Common from Fort River. Um, so it is going to be on Zoom on September 13th from 6.30 to 8.30 and Wayfinders will be there to kind of discuss their vision for the new buildings um, and kind of the priorities and who they're hoping to house in that, um, in that development. Is that for both the place on Belchertown Road and East, and East Street School or just East Street School? It, it's for both. They kind of packaged it as a, um, a joint property to, so, so the developer will oversee both sites. Um, are there any other announcements? And Deborah, I just wanted to check in. Do you think that by 
forwarding Pat the email and having Pat bring that to the count the next council meeting that would be still keeping things in the in the spotlight um are you comfortable with that as the plan yeah and then just adding like when is the police report the investigatory report going to be done because we haven't heard anything about that too so we need to kind of get a uh, get a response or get get some information on that once that's done okay all right perfect thank you um so now we will move on to public comment. Um, during the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name, preferred pronouns, and residential address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. No speaker can cede their time to another speaker. The CSSJC will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment. Um, let me see. So it appears there are two additional attendees in the audience. I don't know if either of them wish to speak. And perhaps we can leave space at the end of the meeting if, if anything has come up during the meeting that people would like to respond to. But seeing no hands up, we can move on to the next agenda item, member reports. Does anyone have any reports? Well, I think we did that unless there are other extended reports. I guess the only other thing to mention would be that Cress officially, I guess, hit the ground running yesterday, responding to calls. Um, so I don't know if they responded to any, I don't know how their first day was. Um, Jen, do you have an update around that? Yeah, no, they haven't responded to calls yet. So they are doing outreach. So they've gone to the, I know that they're going to the schools, they're going to the Amherst Survival Center, Craig's Doors, and other um, places in the community, just kind of introducing themselves to folks as they, as they go about. But so, they haven't um, started taking calls yet. Okay. This is Deborah. Um, so two things on that. One would be like, if we could I mean, are we going to be doing like reports from um, Earl, like about press, like once a month then? Because I know now it's this two week situation. So I'm not sure if, if we're going to ask them for a report every time we have a meeting or once a month. So, I mean, that's something we need to think about so that we can get that on a, on a like routine. And then the second thing is around the uh, outreach, um, just making sure that, you know, it, it is really like very inclusive that it's out there. I mean, is it out there everywhere? Like in terms of like, obviously making sure that it's outreaching to people that English is not a second language, outreaching also on websites and newspapers and I don't know, everywhere. I mean, it should be everywhere, you know, so that people know about press. And I don't know if that if that's happening or not. So just want to make sure that that's taking place because that was one of the things that I, I was really very much wanting to happen when I was part of CSWG was that it would be very uh, intensive outreach and marketing and media around press. Um, I, I thank you for that comment, Deborah, and I do agree. I think that's really important um, that the community is made aware in many different ways and, and Earl did say to me in passing that some funding around engagement strategies might be a helpful place for um, for Crest to get some support. Um, so that might be something we can talk about later in our discussion. But it's so it super important. Last um, meeting, we did re make that request, um, Deborah, and I'm sure everyone recalls that you know, we would at least like an outline of what is occurring on the Crescent and DEI 
so that we can be aware uh, and, and know how we could help uh, shape and guide uh, and help these two um, offices with, within the town. So, you know, again, if, if we aren't part of the discussion, we're in one silo, we're in one area, not wanting to be, <laughs> and then CRESS and DEI are in another. So we should be working together. And uh, if we're not aware of what's going on, the, the good stuff, the, the stuff that's challenging, uh, we don't know how to assist and how to, um, you know, uh, consult and, and help guide this this um you know this new process of press you know we understand it's new and di is new but that's what we're here for so um again if we could make that request if we have to do it officially i don't know but maybe our town council members can also help us with that to make sure that we're given each time and an outline you know it can just be added to this this is the timeline of of Crest started here, and this is we're adding to this timeline now. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't know that I was supposed. I mean, I'm sure Earl would have written something up. I didn't know that. Um, so, but I know that there'll be something on the 28th. Okay, thank you. Okay, Miss Pat. Wait, sorry, this is Deborah. Uh, Councillor. Uh, Dorothy had her hands first before me. Did you hear okay. what I said? Yes, yes, Dorothy, please go and then we'll have Miss Pat and then Deborah um, has something uh, to add. Uh, this is really a, a quick question, a question about Cress to Jennifer. Um, I read in the newspaper that Cress was not going to respond to noise complaints and yet I thought that was one of the things they were gonna to respond to. So um, it, it does seem like the direction of Cress is changing. And um, I do agree that this committee should know what's going on. So I'm wondering if, if you could answer, is it really true they're not gonna be responding to noise um, complaints? I, I know that the noise complaints are a little bit more complicated than just send Cress alone. So I somehow I believe that the Earl and the chief are, are trying to work that out to see what the best safest path is because mm -hmm. I think it you know and I think that my guess is dispatch has to really be able to weed through and ask the right questions to figure out who can be sent to what noise complaints there's a difference between sending crest to a off-campus party with 300 or 200 kids at it than mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. something that we saw the other day on July 5th right so they're trying to figure out the best way to move forward with that or if it's a domestic or whatever the case may be so i think that they are working on that but i will make sure that earl uh talks about that in his update for the 28th thank you yes thank you um miss Patton and deborah so not to label what deb and d have already said um and thank you counselor Dorothy for bringing that up because I was going to comment on that as well. So from CSWG with our recommendations, our report, we were very clear that you know, both CRES and DEI, what, you know, our role would be to support them. And I had expected that we will have a rep from CRES department and a rep from DEI. But it seems like the DEI department rep, you know, are more consistent. So what I'm trying to say is that we need a better communication. Like I was surprised that um, all is not here with us today. I expected him to come, especially launching the new program yesterday. Um, I'll leave that comment like that because I was a little bit distressed when I read it in the paper that Chris will not be handling noise complaint. And that's not what CSWG had recommended. Um, but I can't comment any further because he's not here. Um, so I'm getting very concerned um, because we were very, very clear what we would like Chris to do. 
in the community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Deborah? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, again, as Ms. Pat said, not to belabor the point, but I guess the point that I want to make is that DI and CRESS, you know, they, they need to, to make sure that they're communicating with us. And I, I think even it doesn't have to be just on a monthly or I guess now biweekly time, uh, time period. They need to communicate with us if something comes up and they need us to kind of really they need to consult with us because again, what happened at the last meeting where I was asking Pamela in terms of why she wrote that report, right? That that exonerated the police department when really I don't think she had a place. She shouldn't have done that, you know. Let me just be honest, she shouldn't have done that, you know. So I think those are the types of things that she could have come to us beforehand and asked us about, right? So that then we could have advised her and been like, mm, we don't think it's a good idea. Just let the police do their, their investigation and then we can figure things out as opposed to writing a report that still had a lot of gaps, you know what I'm saying? And then it, it looks like, you know, she exonerated the police, you know? And so so I, I can't say enough that, you know, th th these two um, departments need to utilize us more and all along the way, not just once a month or twice a month, but all along the way. And then yes, and then second, um, if if press is not being utilized for, for complaints, for noise complaints, that's problematic. We said anything non-criminal, press should be utilized for. So um, so yes, we need to get updates. We need to find out more about that. And, and, and that's gonna be critical for us to know what is being done and what is being decided. Um, you know, we need to get those updates as it is happening. Thank you, Deborah. And I do think that that's kind of what we had started to touch on last time about almost us having people identified as liaisons to the DEI department and to CREST so that there is more consistent communication perhaps in between our meetings. Um, I know that we didn't kind of resolve that conversation in our last meeting, but but I, I think it absolutely would be helpful to have more and more consistent communication. Absolutely. Any other comments or uh, member reports? So do we have anything from, um, well, under DEI? Well, so DEI is there because for CDBG. Yeah, I saw that. So we'll have that. Okay. I mean, so I, the agenda was set up to be about financials mm -hmm. as last that I knew and that was it. So that's fine. I'm just asking as, as mm -hmm. member reports go. So did we have anything from DEI? Okay. All right. So um, we can go on to ARPA funds. Public comments. Oh, we're missing we, public comments. Didn't we do that already? We did. We did. Yeah, oh, we did. Okay. Yeah. Thank so, you. So yeah. Okay. Um, I want to start off by saying that this is the second time that I had requested for our finance director to join us um, to discuss the upper fund. There was no response from him. And I feel like majority BIPOC town appointed committee is being disrespected. I just want to put that out before um, I speak on APA. So APA fund is tax dollar, okay? We all know that. I hope that part of my role in this committee is to raise awareness about follow the money in our town. I will just speak on our business community tonight. Based on what is on the town website, it appeared that the federal government gave our town a little bit over $11 million. And when I reviewed it a couple of weeks ago, my eyes were pumping because the funds that were um, targeted to Amherst business community 
um, did not fit into um, racial equity lens in the sense that bid business improvement district was given three hundred dollars a uh, three hundred thousand dollars to for drake okay for drake and then uh bid um that is also two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to create uh economic em empowerment officer apparently to improve uh, economic activity in our town. So a group that is made up of mostly commercial landlords, rich people get more money. So that's $550,000. Now, in MS for retailers and restaurants, they are mostly BIPOC uh, business people. The town only gave $40,000 for new startup businesses, go figure. And then only $25,000 for the rest of the business owners. In addition, the town gave Chamber of Commerce $35,000 for technical support of businesses, whatever that means. Now, according to the Chamber of Commerce, they, they were supposed to highlight, prioritize BIPOC-owned businesses. And as far as I know, there was no outreach made to our local business folks, regardless of race. Because I say this because I reach out to them and I say, oh, by the way, do you know about the funding APA? I had to explain to some people what APA fund is. And then if they had applied, they had no idea what I was talking about. One is uh, I spoke to four, I contacted four different BIPOC businesses. The only black woman in this town that runs a uh, hair saloon. That's where people of color go to get our hair done, including myself. They don't know anything about that. One of the barber shop that is owned by a black man did not know anything about this upper fund. Um, a, 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 a Jamaican owned restaurant did not know about this fund. A Hispanic um, hair repair shop did not know about this fund and yet, with Chamber of Commerce, they're promoting that they will put BIPOC folks as priority in the funding for only $25,000. When we have more than 200 or even more businesses in our town, how is that fair? And this is tax dollar money. So basically what we've done here is how, you know, create um, welfare, Welfare, man, welfare to rich people in our town. Plus, our town manager sits on bed board. So basically, you know, having access means a lot. Power speaks, money speaks. To so have bid get three hundred dollars for Drake for what? When people who are most impacted by pandemic. Some of them did not even know about this. What type of outreach the Chamber of Commerce did to businesses, regardless of race? There was no phone call made to them. There was no email you know, sent to them. Some, some of the businesses are not even members of Ch Chamber of Commerce. Yes, there was something in their newsletter. Even some of the members of Chamber of Commerce said they don't read the newsletter. They're struggling, start, staffing, shortage and you know as a businesswoman i know the struggle of running a business so some of them did not read it in the newsletter but that's not the point chamber of commerce was, was giving thirty five thousand dollars okay for technical support of businesses what did they use that money for we need answers we need to follow the money in this town we need to know who is benefiting most from our tax dollar 
And this brings me to, so, you know, more than $9 million have already been distributed. So we have $2 million left. My suggestion would be to please the town manager to hold off on this because CSWG recommendations have not been funded yet. DEI is underfunded severely. We recommended uh, an administrative assistant to help our director and our assistant director. That's not, that has not happened. Two black women need support to get their work done. They have a lot that they do. We talked about um, healing in our town. There was no funding in the budget. So APA fund needs to be on hold. And if our liaison to so town council, uh, councilor Dorothy and councilor Pat, you know, can report back that we really need to use the rest of the $2 million towards CSS, CSWG recommendation and also to our business community. I'd like to see at least half a million to go to those businesses who are so much impacted. They pay taxes in this town. They help to um, bring economy to our town and we need to do the right thing for them. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, I want to share with our group, uh, maybe you've seen this or maybe you've been on um, the bid and the chamber websites, uh, what's listed in terms of um, BIPOC businesses. First off, when you go to the packets that um, are the links for ARPA that uh, we received, just to give you a sense of the wording, because these, these funds, you have to apply for it, right? So here is the one for um, small businesses that Ms. Pat was referring to. Small Business Economic Assistance through ARPA funds, American Rescue uh, Plan funds. So startup grants, um, there's a bid committee reviewing submissions to make the awards. We'll, we'll look at the, the committee in a moment. Um, and then here, it says promoting equitable outcomes. So this is part of the purpose and the mission. A minimum of 50% of funds will be reserved for BIPOC, LGBTQ, women and other marginalized community owned businesses. Um, so they're looking at, you know, uh, minority owned uh, marginalized communities in a broad way. All these businesses, I'm sure, need uh, funding and help. But then, if I can find my link. I have too many things open on here. We get to, here's the chamber and the bid. You know, we have some, some good folks on here. Uh, Jen's on there. Um, I know Angelica Castro uh, is a community members on here. Um, um, but do you know, so, these folks, I'm no, sure. No, I, I want us to understand oh. because these are, this is, you know, folks are, are, there's the chamber and there's the bid. And these are folks making these decisions. The other thing, I can get to it. Oh, here it is. This is what's listed under the chamber. And when you do a, a Google search for bid as well and minority owned businesses, it comes here. We and can't see are, what you're looking at. I'm sorry. Oh. I just, yeah. It said, oh, I was sharing. But it was the same original oh, page sorry. that you started with. So thank you. Okay. So here it is. So this is what's listed um, under the chamber and the bid for uh, BIPOC um, businesses. And I'm sure all these businesses need help and are struggling. Um, one is in uh, Belchertown. 
and maybe that's an Amherst resident. I don't know. The other's in Hadley, and they all belong to the chamber because the chamber is not just an Amherst locale. Um, so when we're going to talk about, as Ms. Pat put this forward, about accountability, we would like to know where are those funds going, who did they go to, and how can this committee, but also DEI, help in making sure there's a more equitable outcome as the proposal reads for BIPOC businesses. Because the BIPOC businesses that Ms. Pat just uh, listed aren't even on here. So and that doesn't mean there wasn't outreach, but it sounds like from, from what Ms. Pat is sharing, that um, there was no outreach to these businesses to get them the information to even um, apply for the ARPA funds. So I'll stop there for now, but um, I think the what we have on the website for the, the town itself pertaining to ARPA is, is very re revealing in terms of um, a lack of outreach and education um for these funds and their availability to the people the BIPOC people in the community BIPOC entrepreneurs and business owners and I'll stop sharing now I think Jen had her hand up Miss Pat um and then it looks like Pat DeAngelis had her hand up and is now not up um Jen Okay, so I just, I, Miss Pat, you sent us an email a couple of weeks ago from the, the email chain that, I, chain that I forwarded to the group. And as soon as you sent that to me, I was like, okay, we have to find out where this was advertised. And I honestly would think that there at some point is a, an email for all the businesses, like a, a large email listing where they list serve where they can send out but when we asked or when I asked where these things were advertised it was said that it went out in a press release to all media they were written about in the Gazette and Mass Live listed in both the chamber and the bid newsletter and plastered more than once on the both the chamber and the bid socials Facebook Twitter and Instagram representative Mindy Dom shared them on her pages as did and then so the town shared it on our Facebook page the Twitter page and on our town website. And not to say that that's enough, but I just wanted to, I, as soon as you sent me that email was sent to us, I asked the question of, of where it was advertised because that to me seems like a legitimate question. And it doesn't seem like there should be anybody that is a business in Amherst who shouldn't have been able to benefit from those funds. And it also, she also stated that, uh, the pre-existing grants were first and we have given 25,000 to businesses throughout Amherst. The first round of technical and new business grant deadline has passed and we have awarded 20,000 in new business grants. And I believe almost five in technical. To this moment, 100% of the grants have been awarded to BIPOC, LGBTQ plus and women owned businesses. There will be a second round for new business in December. So the Technical support is to support, help businesses who need, I don't I, like, I don't want to label or name one particular business, but sometimes businesses need assistance that they're not, so they can have an architect come in and help guide them or because a lot of the businesses needs architects to come help lay out the, the, the layout of the business. And um, so that's what the technical support is for things such as architects and or guide, advice for how to move forward with their business. And then, um, so Angelica and I are part of the Chamber's Equity Task Force, but we don't know who applied because the bid is handling the piece with the ARPA funds and not the Chamber. So we don't, we don't vote or we don't know who's on, who's applied and hasn't applied. That's not something that we've been doing. So I um, just wanted to clarify that piece of it. And then, there was one more thing that was said, um, and I can't remember off the top of my head. Sorry, I'll remember in a few minutes after maybe after Miss Pat speaks. But I just wanted to 
express or let you guys know though. That's what I have for the information on the ARPA funds. Ms. Pat. So Jennifer, thank you for sharing that um, update. I think the whole point of inclusion that we're trying to achieve in our town is to understand that not everybody, you know, go to social media or always read their emails. Some people may not ha even have emails. What has happened to the regular traditional um, outreach, making phone call to people, reaching out, you know, uh, distributing flyers. Chamber of Commerce got $35,000. They would have used some of those money to send out flyers to all businesses in their door or mail it out, mail them out one-on-one. -on -one. And then there would be no excuse for a business to say, I didn't see it. When, you know, I know what it feels like to run a business. Sometimes you're behind some news breaking, whatever it is, because, you know, struck, you know, trying to, you know, run your business on a daily basis is no, is no easy. So that's a flaw. And I will hope in the future, when DEI is fully funded, that if ever there is any type of financial distribution, it should go through DEI to, to handle for a couple of reasons. Some people are not members of um, Chamber of Commerce. So they may not, they will just assume that, you know, they will not be included. I have really issues with the application process. I have very, you know, I have issues with um, what type of uh, project that businesses could use the fund for. Bid is, ha you know, handle the funds and they want businesses to use that money to renovate their buildings. Who does that? There was no input from the businesses who need the money the most. There were like criteria where you, where you, you know, where to spend the money for. As a business owner myself, I'm in healthcare field. And when the APA fund came for health for, for healthcare, Mass Health basically told us to use it for working capital, to give our staff raises, whatever you feel that is appropriate to, you know, with your, with your businesses. But our bid is telling people, use it to improve their own building that, they, that the retailers don't own. Decision was already made for the retailers and restaurant owners. I don't agree with that. That's not equity. That's not inclusion. That's not you know. These businesses are not on the same table making decision. It's not okay. It's not all right. It's tax dollars money. We need to have the list of the people who receive the money. We need to know how much, and we need to you know moving forward with the two million dollar left. That money should not go to bid or chamber to manage. We should find another group to distribute money to our businesses. And we should rethink, reimagine what the businesses need the money for. Let them give input to our town, like this is their need for the, for the, for the funds. Thank you. So just to, you know, it's, this is not an anecdotal um, discussion. The uh, Amherst Heritage Reparations Group uh, did a preliminary report about uh, Black entrepreneurship and um, the economic need uh, in Amherst uh, pertaining to folks of African heritage. And um, the numbers, as you could see, are not fully filled out. These are um, uh, old data sets. But what is occurring is that there has not been um, an adequate survey of 
BIPOC businesses, particularly black and brown businesses. And I have, I have nothing against that. I have my own business as a woman and as someone of African heritage, um, you know, and I employed uh, folks uh, who were white, who were from the Caribbean, who were, uh, who identified as LGBTQ, uh, trans, um, you know, so this is something that I approach as diversity is needed in every sector, particularly business. But when we're talking about black and brown businesses and the lack of representation, not only in the bid in the chamber, but when it has, uh, when it comes to, um, you know, the dispersion of funds that, you know, all businesses need it, but particularly the most vulnerable and I, and the most vulnerable in this case, um, most likely, and again, we need some survey data to, to back this up, um, were black and brown businesses in this area that are already struggling. And so during COVID uh, and quarantine uh, a situation, many of those businesses uh, barely made it. Um, and from what I understand, and I'm, I'm so glad that Ms. Pat is there with, with her business acumen, they reached out to uh, Ms. Pat and to other people in the community because they don't have a relationship with the chamber. Mm -hmm. And so the chamber, you know, you would, you would think that this is something that they would uh, have gotten better at uh, during uh, COVID and quarantine because the CSWG had meetings with the chamber and the, the bid about this very issue, the lack of representation, the lack of outreach. I attended one of those meetings. So this is something that I think uh, is appropriately uh, in our kind of wheelhouse of the CSSJC when we talk about equity, but also in terms of what can the newly created DEI office do in trying to make um, you know, the, the business sector much more equitable, not only in terms of representation, but in terms of funds that are available to everyone else. Okay, so there's something lacking. There's something lacking. And, you know, if you have not read the AHRA report, it goes on to then talk about, you know, why uh, particularly African heritage folks then leave the area because of the difficulties in terms of uh, business startups, difficulties in terms of, uh, you know, just the cost of living here, et cetera. So I just wanted to share that. The report, of course, is on the town website under uh, the AHRA uh, committee. So this is Deborah. I know I, you know, I can't raise my hand or whatever. So I don't know if there's someone else in front of me. Nope. Uh, so yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat and um, Dee for, for obviously sharing all this information and enlightening us on, on some of what's been going on. So for me, I guess, what would be kind of like the next steps, right? Um, I know Ms. Pat, you said you've asked for the director of finance to come, but has not. You know, the person hasn't come to, to really. So we need to kind of focus in on, on, on what are the next steps so that we can really, you know, talk to those that can really, you know, let us know, like, what has the money been used for? What is the remaining amount going to be used for so that then we can put the pressure on them to utilize it for this purpose in terms of equity, inclusion, diversity, and making sure that they're doing actual outreach. I mean, obviously, yeah, you know, social media and all that is great, but it's not going to get into the hands of those that really need to, to know. And yeah, and how can we use DEI now that DEI is in place to really do that more intimate outreach? 
agreed. So what, you know, how, uh, where's the money? Who received it, right? We'd like uh, a reporting out of that. Uh, because this, again, these are not privatized funds. These aren't private donations. This is uh, public money. Yeah, and how much is left and who's going to, and what's the plan for the, the remaining amount of money that's left too? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's, that's something that Ms. Pat, um has called for let's let's stop and hold hold on to the money until we can figure out um a more equitable uh way of uh dispersing and and sharing those funds so we need an audit you know a, a type of uh bipoc equity audit when it comes to the the arpa funds so can we ask our um, town council liaisons, like who it is that we need to, you know, make that request of? Because since the finance director is not heeding our call, so who do we need to co communicate with to make this happen? Dorothy, Pat. Okay. We have been informed and reminded that as liaisons from the town council, we are not supposed to be in the room. We're supposed to stay in the audience and that we are not to speak at the meetings. Those are the present rules. They may be looking at them again, but I, I really apologize. Um, I, um, I just think your discussion is just fabulous and I really appreciate it. But, I, my picture really should be, I should be put back in the audience, okay? So thank you for reminding us of that, Dorothy. I know that that came up in one of the town council meetings um, and how should you all proceed as liaisons. Um, we have a very similar to issue um, with, with um, Amherst Media, but what um, I think is going to be necessary from this committee is to once again draft a letter. Uh, what we would appreciate is um, town council members, whether it's our two liaisons or other council members, uh, raising this, this up as a, a question that deserves uh, to be prioritized within the town council uh, committee discussions and, and actually get a reporting out um, from Sean Magano. Um, what's going on with these ARPA funds? Okay, so I don't know who's, there's three, now there's four hands raised and I don't see the fourth. So Allegra, do you know who's first? You wanna um, go first, Allegra? I believe Jen and Miss Pat were ahead of me, and then it looks okay. like Pat DeAngelis has her hand raised as an attendee. Oh, I'm okay. not sure if we should call on her based on what Dorothy just said. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe she has something to, you know, to offer in okay. terms of clarification. But okay, Jen. Um, yep. Yeah, so Sean wasn't able to attend to this meeting, and I, I think, from what I'm understanding, is that he's asking he's being asked to attend a lot of committee meetings at this time because it's budget season. So um, either two things can happen. You can write questions and they can be sent to him or you can set up a private meeting to meet with him. But I think at this time, you know, part of it is, is that so many different committees are asking because it is budget time for his presence. And I think they're trying to really kind of hope that they can get a list of the questions because a lot of the different committees have the same questions, some of them, not all of them. So that's what I was told and um, he wasn't able to attend today's meeting. So if you would like to set up a meeting with him, then we can do that. If you have specific questions, then we can submit those as well. All right, Ms. Pat. Pat and I, would I would defer to Allegra because I also would like to piggyback on what uh, Jennifer just said, because how it sounded to me, I will express later. So Allegra, why don't you go? Then I'll okay. come back. Um, and I just also wanted to note that there somebody, um, Pat, 
did Miss Pat DeAngelis did write something um, in the Q and A. So I just my question, and this I guess might be for Jen, um, is that one of the ARPA categories is that there is supposed to be an ARPA like grant manager person who I would imagine would be the person who would have a lot of the answers to these questions in terms of who who are the small businesses that have received the funding, et cetera, et cetera. So I wonder, is that actually a position that has been filled? And is that a position that we could perhaps reach out to? Um, On the town side, it's Leah Carver. Okay. She's the ARPA grant manager. And um, I know that the bid hired someone through the ARPA funds as well. Her name is Lizzie Alwan. Um, and my other thing, and I don't know if we want to wrap up kind of the conversation about business first, I did just have one other note about some of the ARPA categories. So I don't know if we want to go to Pat DeAngelis and then Miss Pat, and then come back to me, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? I'm flexible. So sure. Um, Oh, okay. Um, in the Q and A, it says liaisons can answer questions, but we are not speaking for the council. You can request us to ask questions directly to the council. Thank you. Okay. It's clarification. That was from uh, Pat DeAngelis. Yes. Okay. So. I hope that our two liaisons then will um, take this, uh, these questions pertaining to ARPA funds and um, wanting to know how much is left, what is the plan on spending uh, the rest of the funds, um, and a, just a basic audit of who received the money um, and how much. Miss Pat. Okay, Allegra, you sure? I should go. Okay, so two quick uh, points. One is, in addition to uh, the people who, the businesses who received the funds, I would like to know businesses who were declined the funds. Um, I said that because two of the businesses uh, that I spoke with, um, not you know the four that I mentioned today, but in the past, said that they were declined several times in applying, and that worried me a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, the upper fund that my company received, nobody asked me for my tax return. I mean, it's fair game if you want to make sure that your um, the businesses pay their taxes. That's different, but um, I just I will have to leave it there. So I want to go back to what. Um, so real quick, Miss Pat, because I want to make sure I'm I'm yeah. writing down this request. So yeah. you are are requesting a record of applicants. Yes, basically, and who got funded, and mm -hmm. um, another thing I found out with Chamber of Commerce, um, some folks were told we give priority to our members first. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they, you know, they give they give funding according to whatever your your pre-pandemic, you know, money. Is, you know, there is like all kinds of criteria that they, they put forward, simply because the people who are most affected are not on the table making the decision. So mm -hmm. there is a lot to unpack when it comes to how our do, uh, tax dollar money has gone to the business community. Right, which That's is not very, the government website, the the state. Yeah. Uh, and federal website does not, you know, they, you don't have to belong to the bid or a chamber of commerce in any town or city in, in yeah. order to re receive funds. Yeah. Okay. So very quickly, um, I'm okay if the finance director wants us to make a list. I want to make sure that the same, uh, the same standard is for other groups. Is that the same with the town council? Would that be the same with the finance committee? Or is it is this rule only for 
majority BIPOC town committee. And this is not a question to Ms. Jennifer, you know, she's just, she's the messenger. She just relayed what was said, to, you know, she got. And I thank you for that, but I need to find out more. Is this done across the board? This is budget season. Is the finance director asking all the board, all the, the groups to submit questions? And if we were to meet with him privately, wouldn't that be violating uh, open meeting law? So I'm confused by that. But thank you, uh, Ms. Jen, for, well, for your comments. You wouldn't be able to. I would, I would say you should choose a few representatives as long as it's under the four uh for folks so that there's not a quorum reached and i you know i really only um oversee not oversee but i'm only the staff liaison for the for ahra hrc and this but i do know that one of the i think it was the ecac asked sean to attend and he didn't and so the staff liaison took down the questions that people asked and submitted them to Sean and then he answered them and she brought them back to the group. I don't know who else that happens to or not, but I mean, I know that finance committee is one of those that he is a staff liaison to or he's usually at finance committee meetings. So I think that that one is a little bit different, but um, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Allegra? Um, okay, let's see. So I was going through the quarterly reports for expenditures and all of the different, like, um, what's it called? Like descriptions of the programs. And I noticed that a few were missing descriptions and that also like a few programs had just like magically appeared in the June 30th report that weren't um, in earlier reports. Um, and so I don't know if there somewhere is a, um, a description of some of them, but one that doesn't have any sort of description that is a large chunk of money is mental health services, which I think is clearly an important thing to have pre, you know, post, post pandemic, if you will. Um, and there's no description of what that looks like. And I know the two big million dollar each chunks for affordable housing and house unhoused folks services don't have um, descriptors either. Um, and then in the third quarterly expenditure report, all of a sudden there was a public restroom project, trail maintenance project, and then a capital projects management. So I'm wondering, especially based on the capital project manager is that somebody that would be in charge of say like liaisoning with the school and the library committee and the fire station and DPW is that is that or is that money that would be going towards some of those projects or um, so that those were my questions that those five things seem to be missing um, descriptions and then there was one other thing oh so in terms of uh, in terms of where ARPA funds might actually be allocated to something from CSWG's recommendations, there is the $500,000, well, there's the 250 for CRESS, and then the $500,000 for the Youth Empowerment Center development. Um, and I'm still unclear because reading the description, it seemed like that was just $500,000 for a report and a planning. And I don't know if, if I'm reading that wrong, but it seemed not like that funding would be actually put towards the, the, a center and programming at the center, but it would be more based on getting community, doing a needs assessment, getting community input, which are important things to do. Um, but I'm just, I'm wondering a little bit more about that piece of the budget. And I do note that it's going to the recreation department and I know CSWG had made the recommendation that that goes under DEI. So I don't know if that has shifted now that DEI is actually 
thing that we have. You know, we have our two lovely DEI assistant director and director working for us now. So I hope that as, as they continue in their work that that will get shifted back onto their plate. They might not hope that, but um, I don't know if you have any further information about that $500,000. Jen, we don't expect you to answer all the questions, but <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I, 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 but if you have some info <laughs> or the town council members about the money, please share. I, I, I don't. I think that the the five hundred thousand dollars, the bulk of that five hundred thousand dollars, is still in existence and hasn't been used. Although, don't necessarily quote. I mean, I haven't heard that that money was spent yet, and so I think that it's back to the drawing board with how they were gonna move forward with the Youth Empowerment Center, which is also on here under the CDBG. So we can talk about it, kind of merge it into one conversation. But, you know, I'm when it comes to the Youth Empowerment Center and the BIPOC Community Center, I, it's like you have to have a funding source, but also it has to be approved by council. And I'm, and I'm just not exactly clear, like, if this group needed to move forward with trying to initiate one of those, which one they should move forward first with, right? Like I don't, because I don't understand why you would have to find the funding stream for either one of these programs necessarily. So it seems like you should be able to go to council and it would be their, re I, I could be wrong, responsibility to find out how the, how to, how to fund it, although you guys can always suggest or recommend, make recommendations to it. But as far as I know, that money has not been, um, depleted it's still there and they're I think that they're reshaping the way that they're going to move forward with the process for the youth empowerment center okay. that's all I really know thank you yeah so similarly um over the summer there was a finance committee meeting uh to and I'm going to share screen right quick um to talk about this overall strategy not that I'm, I want to move us out of ARPA, but it sounds like it's merging with uh, the CDBG funds. So the community development strategy, and there are all these categories, housing, community service, land use, uh, economic development, natural and cultural resources, open space and recreation, transportation, sustainability. Then we get to diversity, equity, and inclusion. What's important about this is that once you get to priority projects, everything has a ranking. What does not show up on here is the Multicultural Center Youth Development, which is again under diversity, okay? So Youth Empowerment Center, BIPOC Multicultural Center, um, and the implementation of translation services for towns communication with residents. That does not show up under priority projects for FY22. So, um, you know, would they go into 23? That is why we decided as a group to have two meetings <laughs> during the month um, because this is the budgeting period. So I just want to make, um, you know, it very, uh, it's it's there on the town website, what they're prioritizing and what we need to work on uh, keeping on their radar and agenda. Um, so I agree, uh, Jen, that that is something we need to decide as a group. Um, do we uh, push for a proposal so that the town um, town council members can approve? What's our next step? Uh, and Deborah, I'm sure, is going to bring that back around. What's our next step? Because this is uh, this is the budgeting period, and um, ARPA funds, CDBG funds, we need to make these two items uh, a priority. The ARPA funds are still the. I mean, the ARPA funds will be available, so they'll still be in existence for the FY 2023 if that becomes the top priority for FY 2023. Okay. Thank you. 
But when I, so the, just to, uh, when I went to the finance committee meeting, Sean Magano was there and that was a question that I actually put to him because what it sounded like during the meeting was that um, they were sidelining the, um, the, the Youth Empowerment Center and, and the BIPOC uh, Multicultural Center. And when I asked for clarification, I said, oh no, we're not sidelined. So it was kind of double speak. So um, there was nothing conclusive. And obviously there still is uh, nothing conclusive pertaining to it. Do we want to, um, I, co chair, go into um, the CDBG uh, funding, and uh, which then brings us to DEI, Youth and BIPOC Center Translation Services, and then the Victim Compensation Fund on the agenda. I just want to check in and see if Philip or Freca have anything to add about ARPA before we move on. Okay. okay. Um, then let's, uh, Freca, do you have anything? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Deborah, I saw that you unmuted. Are you? Uh, yeah, no, I'm okay. It's just that, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm home. So yeah, that's it. Is everyone following this? I know. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's a lot of uh, moving, moving parts. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, CDBG uh, as a potential source of funding. Uh, some of the projects are that the CDBG has funded in the past. Jen, was the, um, was the dog park funded by CDBG? Or was that, what was, that was was well, I know that the bulk of CDBG fund, I mean, the bulk of funds for the dog park were private funds. I think yeah. it was a small amount that came from the town. Um, yeah. But I can find that out if you would like. Yeah, just what pocket of money. I know there was an initial, um, you know, set of funds. Um, Ms. Pat, did you want to speak to uh, CDBG funding? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I actually attended their meeting. Uh, very good people on that committee. Um, I like the way they run their meeting. They allow a lot of uh, public comments, um, people to speak. I listened in for an hour and a half. Um, so basically for the folks that, you know, came and spoke about their organization, the work they do, I was quite impressed with all of them. And I think that CDBG funding could benefit um, the CSWG recommendations like the cultural center, the youth center, the visioning and healing process that we have recommended for Dr. Barbara and I can go on and on. And also to fully fund DEI as well to um, meaning the administrative assistant position. And also Chris, when I read yesterday in the paper was that they're not doing 24 seven at the beginning. I get that because this is one of the fears that CSWG had that this program is starting off with underfunded. So I think CDBG might be a good source of revenue to really fully uh, fund uh, CREST and also DEI. In fact, at CSWG um, group, we have talked about exploring different avenues of funding in addition to the town annual budget allocation. So CDBG will be one of those uh, sources to, for us to explore. And it looks like the town actually can apply to CDBG. So I will imagine the town's grant writer with the um, collaboration with the DEI um, administrators um, to apply for funding for um, some of the projects I just mentioned. And I know, you know there are only two staff and it's a lot of work, but if uh, the town grant, grant writer can you know, help out, that would be great. So yeah, thank you. Any questions or comments? Everyone knows what, yes, Jen. 
Um, so I have some information on the dog park. Thank you. So um, in 2018, the Sta Stanton, Fe this is all on the dog park task webpage too. So um, also in 2018, the Stanton Foundation, a nonprofit organization that supports the development of enclosed dog parks in Massachusetts, awarded the, t the town a 25,000 design grant to plan the park. The Stanton Foundation recently gave another grant for 225,000 to fund 90% of the dog parks hard construction costs, including labor and materials. Uh, so in the fall of 2021, the Amherstown Council authorized an additional 75,000 to cover unexpected costs related to protect, protection of the land cap, landfill cap. So the other funds came from CPA, which I believe was, let me just find it now. So it wasn't CDBG, it was CPA. And I just okay. saw it and I, I, I think it was like 90,000 maybe. Mm. Ouch, that's a lot of money. Yeah, I stand corrected. For sure. I'm sorry, but yeah. it is. Amherst, in February 2018, Amherst Town Meeting authorized $90,000 in, in CPA funds. So that's what it was. It was 90000 authorized by town meeting through CPA funds. Um, I'm just going to grab some water. I'm very thirsty, yeah. so I'll be right back. No worries. Thank you for checking Thank that you. out. Mm -hmm. So is it one one comment very quickly? Isn't the town employee supposed to maintain the dog park too? Um, so we need to be, you know, that's uh, resources, town's resources going to dog park. And then we're here begging for uh bipolar cultural center. Where is the equity? Where is the equity? Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you, thank you. And and as I shared there, um, the CDBG, um, their document, um, we're not even on the list uh, in terms of priorities for, for 2022. Um, and so, you know, for those of you who haven't participated in like the budgeting process, um, I know we bring our, our different experiences, um, but as a community, it's important for us to get those, um, you know, let them know what our priorities are and to submit that. Um, I know that, <laughs> excuse me, Allegra um, and uh, Ms. Pat and some others in the community have participated in uh, trying to, you know, basically talk to the town council, send um, a proposal, a letter um, about what are the community's uh, priorities and how the money could be spent um, or shifted even for the, the, you know, the year's budget. So I'm suggesting, and this is only one part of the process, that as we meet together as, as a group, that we begin to try to figure out on behalf of this committee and representative group body, you know, for people in the community, what should those priorities be? based on, and, and we need only look back like Sankofa, you look back to, to move forward at CSWG and what they laid out. This is the moment in which we as uh, the CSSJC committee can begin trying to figure out how are these items to be funded? How are these items to be funded? So, and we can of course, propose it, make suggestions, but eventually it would have to go and get voted on uh, through the town council. So that's just one way. Um, any other thoughts in terms, I know we have the other ones to discuss, uh, ARPA, CDBG funds, uh, particularly to, for when you were saying DEI department, and I wanted to pick up on that, Ms. Pat, yeah. you, you said that the DEI department and I'm going to say this is D saying it deserves um, as some uh, an assistant, right? That would be that would uh, be responsible for more of the kind of office managing um, type of secretarial calendaring, I'd imagine, type of things. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be something uh, to add there. And then youth and BIPOC center, you know, we've written so much about that, both my group, the CSWG, the research that has gone into the youth and the BIPOC centers, um, how to fund that, right? And then the translation services uh, that have yet to be fully actualized and realized in terms of um, town council Zoom meetings for one, <coughs> uh, which is the larger meetings, but then other meetings that would be important to um, you know, uh, non-English speakers, but it, in general to people in the community, right? Um, and then we have other services listed. What might be those other services as well? Are there other things that, again, within the purview of, of the legacy of the CSWG, but also as CSSJC, I can think of something um, which would be um, the, uh, what I guess a workshop pertaining to, um, you know, uh, the rights of residents when confronted, you know, by the, by the police. Different uh, workshops like that. Anything else? Yes, um, I hope people understand that when we say BIPOC cultural center, we're not just talking about physical space. We're also talking about staffing. We're talking about vehicle. We're talking about delivery of social services. You know, this center will be the center where, you know, if people are going through, you know, hardship they can access emergency fund. Yes, you know, housing, housing voucher, I think is wonderful. However, there are people that would rather pay their rent or their mortgage and then be behind in their medical bill or other stuff. So I think we need to reimagine re what emergency funding should be instead of making it only for housing. Like it could be, emergency fund could be different thing for different people. So it would be like a, a center where people get the help they need or referral or whatever. So it's not just fiscal space. There has to be a site coordinator and we lay all that out with um, in our CSWG report. Um, so I just want to put that out. And also going back to Crest, you know, it has to be 24 seven. And if we're talking about equity, you know, let's look at how APD is funded. I expect, you know, in order for Crest not to fail, they need financial support very strongly. And I don't see it right now. So do they even have the vehicle? Does Crest have vehicle? Do we know that? To go out for calls? How, do, how is that working out? So they're, the via, you know, it's harder for them to get a, electric vehicle at this point and I think they were pushing for hybrid so because we have to do it through the way we have to do it uh which I can give more of a definition of that but there's a process to how a municipality has to make a purchase such as a vehicle and so they're all on hold like not on hold they're just not here yet and so they will be using vehicles from the fire department I believe has extra vehicles in the meantime. And then we also have the town electric vehicle that they've been utilizing. So they do have a way to get around that's not their own vehicle. Thank you. So to, to follow up real quick, Miss Pat on CDBG, is there, yeah. since you attended that uh, meeting, yeah. is there a, a possibility of getting um, one of the chairs or someone from that group to maybe attend our, uh, one of our meetings and to talk about uh, possibilities for the youth and BIPOC centers and, and how potentially something like that could be funded through CDBG. I'm just trying to think of 
what so, what's the follow up to this? Okay, so my understanding is that they make recommendation to the town. They don't actually select. Mm -hmm. So when they had their uh, public forum that day, that's what I had expected for the Chamber of Commerce to do, for example, with the, with the money they got for businesses, like a public forum. And so different organization came and presented, you know, what they will, they would like to access the funds. So they would take all those uh, uh, application that people put in and then forward it to the town or something like that. Yeah. So I'm not sure if it's productive to invite the chair to come because it's mm -hmm. not them that make the decision. They make recommendation and forward it. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Jen. That's my understanding that that night. So organizations put in a proposal, which the deadline is October 15th. Mm -hmm. So if this group would like to make a proposal for anything, um, that deadline is coming up quickly. Um, and from what I saw, I went to that meeting too, because I'm on I'm VP of the Amherst Survival Center Board. And so from my understanding, that was my first meeting too. So from what I understood was people were going there just to kind of uh, lay an outline, but it seems like it's perpetually the same group, which I'm not saying that these social service agencies don't deserve that, that money, but it looks and it appears that it's the same five to 10 groups every year. Yep. So um, it looks like there could be room. And I'm going to say that there's probably other people who are looking at that fund too. So um, if this group would like to put in a proposal for CDBG funds or a request for CDBG funds, not that I wouldn't think that it was strong. I just think you need a very strong, solid uh, plan because they're obviously, and this year I think the funds are for they're being it's you know usually it's a year to year but this year it's two years and so they're they you know you'll get the funding for two years all in one shot and then you don't get any more funds for another two years so i think that's the way that the state is moving forward with cdbg allocations yeah if i thank you for that if i may add i believe that the town can also put in request um proposal so if we already have town grant writers why can't they um work with us and put in the proposal because we're all very busy um part of our job is not to write grants but if we can identify you know if the town manager can you know direct the grant town grant writers to put in stuff for you know yeah but we don't have a town grant writer oh none okay like we have the the Leah does the ARPA funds, but any grant that any department receives, it's because someone in their department applied for that grant themselves. So, you know, and I think the CDBJ didn't really look at the application process, um, but I think at this point right now, at this stage, it's an application. I'm gonna try and take a peek now. So we have other folks with their hand, as you're looking at that and maybe, um, Allegra or Deborah to speak. So Allegra, oh. did you want to go or do you want me to go? Oh, Allegra has her screen on. Go ahead, Allegra. Um, I just, I pulled up the link from the packet that was sent. Um, so the 2022-23 application process. So, the non-social service priorities and the social service priorities. Uh, so, I mean, youth services and development is under there. Um, so I don't know if this is something that we think we wanna move forward with, if looking at that category and thinking about the youth center would be a more um, aligned recommendation for a CBD. I keep on feeling like I'm saying it wrong, CDBG proposal. Mm -hmm. um, but then that begs the question of like who would actually be writing a, um, an application for this. And I guess my other question, and these are just questions that I'm like 
throwing into the environment because I don't know that anyone in this meeting has the answer, but um, do, do they fund things that aren't, that are like more startups or like to get something off the ground or do you have to be kind of an established thing already? Um, would be my question. Um, I mean, my understanding of CDBG is it's project based. So yeah. whatever you need it for that project, those funds could see in theory be available. I'm not, you know, that's how I understood CDBG is that mm -hmm. it's project based. So the Youth Empowerment Center is a project, right? Right. To get it and going. Yeah. And also BIPOC Cultural Center is social yes. services. Yeah. So um, I, I think, you know, it should be eligible for funding. Oh, wait, oh, wait, but can, I, I mean, I have my hand up. Yes, so I, yes, I, I yes. Need to kind Go of interject yeah. over here. Yes. So wait a minute. Sorry. So CSWG, we made uh, recommendations to the town to create the youth empowerment, to create the BIPOC. So I don't know how it's now falling on us to go, you know, uh, um, apply and write a grant to give money to the town to create what we had said for them to create. That's not our responsibility. The responsibility is for the town to do this work and to find the money to, to do this. So how is it now? Because I'm not understanding, I guess, CDBG or what, what have you. I don't, I'm not understanding this because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit around going to write like grant applications to, to I, fund a a a, a, pro, a a program that the town's supposed to be finding money for. So so I, I guess enlighten me because I'm confused right now. Well, I mean there is that part of it that you know you guys are an advisory. You make a recommendation, and you know some people would say it is to, up to the town to find out where those funds are going to come from. That that's not your perspective. And then there's the other piece of it that you could look at it through the lens of right, but you don't want them to come back and say, well, we just don't have the funds, whether you know that they're there or not. I I mean I don't have a a a, a clear response to that because it could just go back and forth. And yeah, but I don't have a I don't have a project, Jennifer. Uh, that's not my project. I'm not running this project. I'm not doing. It. I mean, so I mean, I if you we're, if we're you overstepping are, bounds, if we're gonna go, uh, you know, find, go, you know, what is it? Apply for a grant that I'm not running. I'm not the project manager. I'm not the anything of of the youth empowerment. You know what I did uh -huh. as part of CSWG was to recommend that that we needed a youth empowerment, that we needed BIPOC, that we needed vehicles for Crest, that we needed X Y Z P D Q. So. Now, you know, CDBG has this money. So, okay, how can, I guess, the town get access to this money? I mean, I think that's what we need to think about, but I don't know. I, I yeah, don't see so our role as a role to be applying for a grant. The DEI department could try it or you could lay it on well, you the town manager, there but. There you go. The DEI And I know that, that would she's be already talked, spoken with. Ben Breger, who was the staff liaison for the CDBG. Yeah. So that I issues. think would be appropriate because DEI is the one that's supposed to be working with youth empowerment and the BIPOC to a, a cultural and obviously CREST and stuff like that to be doing some of those things. Like CREST could be applying for, for some of that money, you know, for vehicles and so on and so forth. I mean, it, it's established programs and, and departments within the town that need to be doing that stuff. I mean, we recommend, we don't go out and actually apply it or, you know, you know, we ask the town to find the money, departments to find the money, but I don't see our role as, apply, you know, going and applying for, for, for grants. Thank so, you, Deborah, for getting us out of the weeds because yeah. that's where I think we started. And then we just started looking at all the details. Um, it's to make the recommendation for the DEI, Crest, the town council, because we are not, we are not program heads. We are not trying to to run a program. So it is our uh, guidance and and uh, suggestions and you know trying to push them to do this. But um, we are shouldn't be applying for it. There's no place for a committee to then be over, you know, uh, the youth empowerment center. So we're here yeah. to try to make it happen. So thank you for that. Yeah, and I think we can we can support the DI right because this this deadline's coming up, you know. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, my thing is, and thank you, Miss Pat and 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 Dee for for bringing this forward and putting it on the agenda. 
we wouldn't even know that this is happening and that the deadline's coming up. Why don't we know it? You see what I'm saying? So that then the DEI and CRESS and all the appropriate pro others, other other pro departments too that are BIPOC focused, LGBTQ focused, so on so forth focused, so that they can apply for that, right? They need to know this information so they can apply for that funding and we can support them in order to do so. So would we see our role in this committee as kind of, you know, maybe sending like a, a memo to Cress and DEI saying, hey, don't know if you are aware of this, but this, you know, CBDG is a thing. It's got an application, the deadline's coming up. Maybe this could be a source of funding for Cress and or DEI initiatives. You might want to take a look at it. Um, absolutely. Because I, mean, I absolutely agree. You know, it's, well, what are we going to do once once we've applied for five hundred thousand dollars? Like sit right. on it because we aren't we don't have a project. But. And the thing is, is that CSWG and the other entities that CSWG hire to do the research, that research to support those those grant or ask is already there. So you know that work is already taken place in, in terms of like, well, you need some research to back it up usually for a proposal. Okay, well, they, they just have to go back to those reports and that research is there. So, Ms. Pat? So this discussion is necessary and useful. At the same time, frustrating for me and sad that a whole town of Ames doesn't have grant writer at all, but we 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 but um, we have a development director, economic development director, to benefit you know big because they're the property owners. That's yeah, economic development director budget you know was budgeted for. Then we don't have grant writer, and again, this is equity issue. When we talk about crest, first of all, it's underfunded. I wouldn't support you know for for CREST or DEI to be going after grant writing. I think our committee as an advisory committee should push for a town-wide grant writer so that if we identify source of revenue, we, we, we you know, have that person or even two people to, to be grant writers. I don't think we should add additional work on DEI and, and CREST. And this is, these are BIPOC-led uh, departments. Okay, let's see APD. They, they, they're well funded. And, you know, there's a and, board um, that I sit on that, um, oh, I thought you, I'm sorry, Ms. Pat, you go ahead okay. and stop. I'm, well, I'm almost done. So I'm looking at this from equity lens and it will be overworking our DEA staff and also our CREST staff. The town need to get grant writer to do this. And like Deb said, it's not our responsibility to, to write grants. Our role is to, you know, make recommendation, support DEA and CREST, period. And this is what we're trying to do because they're not, you know, the staff, the administrators are not going to to say well, they're not going to do it. This is what we are meant to be to be doing, like supporting these two departments by saying, no, they should not write the grant because they are underfunded. The town should get a grant writer to do it. Thank you. Thank you. So should then we, we are making a recommendation. We're going to send um, uh, an email memo, however you, you want to uh, phrase it. The town manager. To the town manager. Yes. Um, to ask for a grant writer, right? Yeah, to write to um, that CDBG. Yes. In lieu well, just of that, in general, because I think the only thing in is general, thing yes. Is, yeah. So, Miss Pat, I'm sorry, yeah. but the only thing is, is that we're going to miss the deadline. There's a problem. The deadline's October 15th. You know that they're, they're going to take pressure on. Yeah. I mean, the, so that the, just the, falls on us for now, right? 
But, yeah, but, but it's going to take forever and a day for them to hire someone. And so then you miss the deadline. Consultant, and consultant. If I want a grant, I hire a consultant in my business to write it for me. I can't right. do everything. So let the town hire a consultant to write the grant for CB. Yeah, when I say hiring, I don't mean like right away, get an employee. Get a consultant to write the grant on behalf of DEI and Crest is what I'm saying. I'm sorry I didn't make myself clear in the beginning. Thank you. So I'm going to just push back on that, knowing because when I was tired by the town, how long it takes for that process to occur. So I'm about to be with Deborah on that is that is going to miss the deadline. But what I I'm going to suggest as, as the co-chair here and, and maybe put this out to the group. If we write to DEI and uh, alert them to these deadlines and that we would like to see some type of proposal submitted to CDBG on behalf of the, those two projects, the, the Youth Empowerment Center and the BIPOC uh, Multicultural Center. Now we can make the request to the town manager, but that's something that's probably further in the future in terms of uh, it being actionable. The shorter route, if, if they agree that they could take it on, is to write to DEI and see if they could write something up, a proposal. I worry about burnout. That's what I worry about. We're not but gonna get burnt out, we got okay. it. I mean, I don't, I'm just trying to stay in like positive about it. Mm -hmm. So I, there's already been conversations about it. So we'll just right. continue those on. Right. And the research, like I said, the research, if I, I, I was a grant writer in another life, the research is already there. So when you write a proposal, you write a grant, you need that research to, to try to substantiate what's the need, right? Well, the CSWG put the need out there, you know? They did the research, they wrote up the need. So that's already captured in that report. It's to now make the request. Okay, so that's that's my vantage point. If we agree at the end of all this to, to do that, then um, I guess and Allegra I and I'd be willing to write something up. Yes. I would just add uh, Crest to, to, to also apply for anything else that they need, like vehicles and whatever else that they need in terms of their, um, you know, the resources they need to, to be fully, hopefully funded and resourced. Okay. Thank you. Allegra? Um, I keep on like going backwards and I apologize, but I'm looking at ARPA one last time and I'm realizing that there are $30,000 allotted for public health support translations. So I'm wondering why we couldn't get some money for translation from ARPA under say like the category of provision of government services, translating meetings since our, you know, COVID has made us meet remotely. Um, why can't we then provide access to those meetings translated through ARPA funds, which are supposed to have some sort of COVID impact. So sorry that I backtracked, but I'm just real. No, that's, that that's that a great idea. Yeah. It's a great idea. Now that is something um, in terms of uh, trying to distribute uh, <laughs> the, 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 the responsibilities here. That's something DEI uh, I would imagine would uh, write for. I'm asking you, Allegra, is that what, how you imagine that? Or is that so, press or? So back, so I'm on the affordable housing trust as well. And back in last year sometime when they were, when they got this amount of ARPA funds, Sean came to one of our meetings and kind of asked for suggestions from us around what kinds of resources were needed for housing. Um, and at the time, I, I believe it was around the period maybe where CSWG was not 
functioning anymore, but before CSSJC had started. So I don't know if this might actually be a time where we could try and put a memo in and just say, hey, I know you looked into other committees for their input and we weren't a committee yet, but why aren't ARPA funds being used for general translation services? Um, so, so ask Sean Magano, you're saying? Yeah. About it? <laughs> or, and the town manager, I mean, because I think, I think, because it was both of them that came to the meeting um, and we gave them a list of things that we thought would be helpful in terms of housing support and okay all right miss pat so i just want to anything else miss pat very quickly i just want to tag along what you said um allegra so i was following the upper fund um stuff because i you know i'm very good on finance and everything and yes, CSWG was forced to res, uh, res, um, dissolve, as you can remember them, right? And then this, this our group was not created and there was a huge vacuum because if we had this group would have been, you know, advocated for funding for what we're discussing now, but it's good that we're doing it that never, done, you know, um, so that's the consequences of the town not creating this group much, much earlier. And then $9 million had already been distributed and there is no BIPOC cultural center and no youth center. That's the consequence. So I want people to know there is consequences when people of color are um, neglected. This is, this is part of it. Agree. Um, so on the website, actually, that you brought us to, um, Allegra, it's November 4th. Looks like that the applications are due back to the town staffer. Is that the CDBG? Yeah, for CDBG. So not October 12th. Is that correct, Jen? I mean, I, I'm going to go back and look again. I, I left that page for something else, but I was under the impression for some reason that the application deadline was October 15. And of course, I, you know, I could be wrong. I mean, it looks here like it says November 4th. Town. So a little bit more time if that's the case. Uh, we, need a, yeah. we need a clarification, but if that's the case, we have a little bit more time, which is good. those departments cress and dei have a little bit more time yeah but see i just i it, it is november 4th back to town staff are due back to town staff i don't fully understand what that means but i am also just a little bit concerned because rfp is issued and sent out to the agencies so is it by invitation only I'll find out and then I'll send you guys an email tomorrow. Like I'll just go straight to Ben Please tomorrow do. because I'm, yeah. I'm trying to figure it out too. And I, you know, I don't want to tell anybody misinformed information, but okay. I also don't want us to miss anything. Yep. Sounds good. Thank you. And if you could get back to us about it, appreciate it. Cause then we'll know how to write our memos. Um, anything else under CDBG? If not, we can move on to um, victim compensation fund. Okay, this will be like five minutes. Um, so basically, um, we all know what happened on July 5th and these kids are still suffering and their families, you know, is the start of school. Um, some of them have no resources to deal with the emotional trauma they've been through, like counseling and therapy. And I feel this is such a priority if we're really, um, if we want to support these uh, families and their, uh, and their kids. Um, so I would like us to um, come up with a proposal that we can submit to the town manager and to the town council. Um, if somebody wants to volunteer with me to put something together for next meeting. 
for the um, victim compensation fund. And I'm I looking just, at APA fund for that because I don't think APD will not release any money you know, for this. Ideally, I would, I would like it to be APD, but they have power. They won't, they won't allow it. So I, I do suggest that you speak with Pamela because she ran the one in, in Springfield or something oh. very similar to the one in Springfield. So I know that she's working to some degree. She knows that this is something that you guys have been talking about. Um, so I do yeah. suggest that you speak to her. And my I only will. concern with funding anything through ARPA funds is when ARPA funds runs out, what happens? That's, uh, you know, I'm all for uh, using stuff for ARPA funds, but they do run out at some point and they won't be give, we won't get more after a certain point of time. So I just do worry about setting specific stuff up using ARPA funds, unless so, we have a, a, you know, a funding stream for them otherwise. So my, my, my idea of the APA fund is to do these kids and their families right, right away. But I would like to see the victim compensation fund be part of annual budget funding for our town. Eventually, is my thinking. So if that makes sense to people. But these kids need to get help ASAP. Mm -hmm. It's a priority, it needs to happen very quickly. They're struggling, they're having nightmares. Um, they feel that the MS police is, you know, uh, looking behind, you know, they're looking behind their back. They don't feel emotionally safe. This is our kids, regardless of race. We need to do something now. Thank you. Thank you. I do know that um, uh, sometimes ARPA funds, well, ARPA funds are being used in the school district now in terms of um, extra counselors, I believe, were hired. They don't want um, them, yeah. Say that again, Ms. Pat? Oh, go ahead. The kids don't want to get counseling through the school system. They will rather yeah, no, choose their I own know. therapists, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. But that's that's what I'm saying. So maybe uh, in terms of ARPA funds, which are not continual, mm -hmm. but could be used now yeah. uh, to, to provide counseling, yeah. uh, individualized counseling or with with their families, if, if preferred. Of their own choosing, the families need to, you know, decide when, right. when right. to get the help. You know, it doesn't have to come through. The, the town cannot direct anyone to any to therapist. Exactly. The, the family needs to choose. It's confidential right. help. Whatever that help means to, you know, it will be different from families to families. But, you know, let the families and the right. youth take the power back to themselves. Let them decide who, you know, how they want to, to heal from the harm caused by APD. Right. Right. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, yes, Deborah. Deborah. Uh, so, um, yeah, I, I think uh, along those lines, I guess I have two questions. One will be for Jennifer, uh, because Ms. Pat, what you're saying is exactly right. I mean, we need to set that up. But again, you know, timing is, is going to be a, an issue in terms of that. And you're right. You know, um, you know, these young people and the families are hurting now. So my question to the town is, what can we do now? You know, is there an emergency fund? Is there something where we could tap money now to provide to these families? Because we know that these families have been hurt. You know, I mean, Ms. Parity said they're, they're writing a narrative in terms of all the pain and hurt that they've had to go through. And we were able to witness that through those 54 seconds or 53 seconds that happened. I mean, never mind whatever else happened that night. You see what I'm saying? So what, Jennifer, if you know, or if we need to contact, and that would be a question for the town manager, what can be done now? And in addition, right, using ARPA funds to, to set up, the, you know, do a victim um, proposal in regards to that. So I think we need to kind of like, you know, figure that out. And also, it's not going to be just counselors, right? Because uh, the young people that went through this, you know, they might not be able to do their classes. So they need accommodations in the schools. They might not be able to do their job. So they need accommodations at their job, right? These are, these are young people that I'm sure have work after school or have work on weekends. And what if the trauma is impacting them in different ways? So we're looking at possibly, you know, when we're talking about a victim's compensation fund, it's not just a fund, it's in terms of a person that will be there to, to, to really uh, assist, you know, families and, and people that are impacted by the police 
to be able to kind of deal with the ramifications. It's a ripple effect, right? Of a bunch of different things that impact them. What if they're just at home not being able to do anything, right? Because of the trauma. So, so you know, I think we need to kind of branch out when we're, we're talking about the Victim Compensation Fund to make sure that it, it encompasses all the resources that need, they need to get. But I guess back to my question, any emergency fund, anything that we can tap right now, um, Jennifer, or do we need to I mean, ask I, the town manager? I, I would say there's, you know, there's our, there are funds somewhere, right? But I am not necessarily qualified to say that. So I will check in with Paul and see what Ang and Sean to see as one of the questions for Sean is, can, is there something that we can do now? And, you know, if um, the, the nine children feel that, like they want to go to therapy if we you know we don't have to I couldn't imagine why we would have to pick out a therapist we would just have to pay the therapist yeah right and and that's You're something asking for to do right I, now yeah I, that's actually that, what I oh go ahead I'm sorry no I just wanted to, to follow up just finish up and this is something that you know in terms of the town obviously you know going as like molasses in terms of 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 you know, a, a response, this could be an actual response of help and support, right? If the town will put their money where their mouth is and really just funds therapists or whatever else that, that these young people and families might need right now. So actually, my thinking of this compensation fund is not for the town to pay for therapists directly. No, we need to rethink how, um, um, what healing means to different people. I think, you know, there has to be a certain amount of money paid out to these families for them to heal. So if they, you know, they can choose it, it they can use it for therapy, they can, they can use it whatever they want to that will help the family as a unit to heal. It's not for the town to send a check so different therapists, no, we're not doing that. Pay up the, the families. I think it's a more positive, positive way to start healing that, than litigation. Because if some of these families, you know, um, I imagine if it's like upper middle class or middle class, they would have lawyered up. I know I would have lawyered up. So um, let's go to a more positive resolution of this, pay up the families and let them use the money to heal themselves, whatever that means. Thank you. Do we do we have an, I mean, I, I'm just trying to bring it to Paul. So is there an amount that you have in mind? Do you want to Not check really. back with the families? I didn't check with the families. I don't have an exact amount, but I can definitely reach out to them this week. You know, is there an amount they're asking for so they can get help? As we know, therapy is very expensive you know, a hundred bucks an hour or something, you know, it's very, very expensive, but it's just like an example. You know, it impacts parents in their job performance, in their parenting and running their household when their kids, you know, are so worried that they've been targeted so many, many, many times. So um, I would like to see money paid out to the families and not telling families what they, what they should spend the money on. No, we're not doing that. That's not empowering the families. Um, Allegra and then Freke. Um, I guess I'm bringing it back to ARPA again, but what's that $500,000 for mental health services doing? I mean, is that mm -hmm. an area from the current ARPA funds that are allocated for mental health services that it could be tapped into? I'm not prescribing any sort of amount to any family, but I'm just wondering if that would be a reasonable place to make a more direct request um, since it is again listed as one of the service categories that we are funding through ARPA. And so that uh, would go through DEI or, or Quet, a CRES or town manager in terms of asking about the 500,000 to be used potentially for mental health services for this specific reason. Well, I guess just to kind of piggyback on if Jen was gonna to talk to Paul and Pat was gonna to talk to the families and, and relay that information to Jen, perhaps that could 
if if that seems appropriate, perhaps that could be part we of. We still have two million dollars that have not been spent yeah. yet. Right. Two million. That's where I'm I'm looking at the yeah. unallocated money, two million. And I hear you, Allegra, about the 500. I will assume it's for Crest program. I don't know. I can't assume anything. I don't know. Okay, thank you. Uh, Freke? Um, I think the conversation as it is, is still um, a bit hasty. Um, I think what we could do is wait to hear from um, the families and the kids who uh, were part of that incident in July. Um, this relates to what Jennifer had said, which is um, it would be good to hear from them what they've experienced and um, what they might be interested in um, before um, jumping ahead of them, um, whether it's in terms of uh, um, giving some lump sum or whatever it is, I think what we could do is, first of all, hear from them. And then from that case, we'll know what is reasonable or unreasonable to request um, or ask um, from um, the town. I think with regard to the... Um, with regard to the bigger fund, the compensation fund, um, my position, which is consistent as to remain the same, is we need to speak with those who have worked in this area and know a bit more, and then we won't be shooting in the dark, but we would have a better sense of what we are asking for and what we can achieve. So, for example, um, listening and hearing about this um, Apple fund, but just as was mentioned, that's something that will run out. You know, so again, I think we need to determine the scope, speak to those who um, have worked in this area and then come up with something that would be uh, more tangible um, and possibly effective if we need to do that at all. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Pat. So thank you, Freki. Um, actually, you're right that, you know, we need to hear from the family. As a matter of fact, their letter is ready. And I would like to request that um, our co-chair, uh, Dushabaz, read it. Check your, your text message. Okay. So they, it's, it's ready if people want to hear it now, just to save time, then I will eventually email it to the Human Rights Commission. I'm sorry, what is it? It's a, a letter from the families. They the families. seem to it's ready. have yeah. written, yeah, um, a letter. And I mean, I can read it just so we can have a sense of I, I guess what would be useful in this instance is to get a sense of where the families are because we yes. haven't heard from them. So with you all's permission, I'll go ahead and um, read Check the letter. Check your email. Uh-huh, I got it. You got your email? Yep. Okay, Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna read it. <laughs> This is what the families are, are saying, it seems. It has been a little over two months since two armed and uniformed Amherst police officers responded to a noise complaint at a working class apartment complex. As many were setting, settling in from Independence Day festivities, police with their cruisers and flashing lights pulled into the apartment complex parking lot found a group of young teens to assert their power and authority and deprive them wrongfully of their constitutional rights. The teens were instructed to sit on the pavement and in a row like suspects in a police lineup. Of the nine youth involved, six are black and Latino. They're, they are our sons. Try to put yourself in our son's shoes. They were simply visiting and congregating in a friend's parking lot to provide a, accompaniment and comfort in a distressing or unfortunate time 
when they were when they heard a friend was uh, stuck with a flat tire. This is what grownups call mutual aid. They weren't going anywhere until that friend's problems were resolved. Our sons were, were the wrong color at the wrong time, or some who have lived here longer than the ages of our boys will tell it like it is that our color has always been the wrong color for Amherst and based on color have always and will forever be a target, a target of unfair punishment, interrogation, detention, and harassment. Our children have been traumatized, not by brutal physical force, but by the blunt force of racism and the suffocation of racial, racial profiling that they have witnessed and now have experienced themselves over and over again. We look forward to continuing solidarity work with the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee to achieve our goals while protecting our children, their identities, and their future. So this was from uh, one of the, the parents. Um, On behalf, actually, it's a group of yeah. our parents. And right. um, I got it and um, in a draft, but I was instructed to have it read tonight. So I delegated to uh, Deisha Bass, who is the co-chair, to read it tonight. Um, there might be some edits or updates. And when it's finally ready, I will email it to Human Rights Commission. So you're hearing, you just heard you know, from the horse's mouth, the youth and their children. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Freke, you have your hand up. Freke? Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, thanks for um, reading that message, which came from them. I think this is the first time we've had um, an opportunity to hear from um, another party um, in that incident. But again, um, I think it raises a number of questions, both from that event, but also right now. So for example, how do you square um, what was given in the reports last time and what we have at this time, how do we adjudicate that? That's something to um, consider. But um, also it raises the question of um, who are the parents writing this for? Is it all of the parents? You know, um, Most is it of some them. of the parents? Most is um, an inconclusive number. So five right. out of the nine. nine. And so that leaves four. What's um, what they have to add to um, what has been said at the moment. So again, this is why I say we are being hasty. It would be good to get a bit more. We're having a start. You know, we had the reports. We discovered that it was incomplete. Now we have this and we can build on that to get more as we go now. I also recognize that time is an issue. And so we can't get to 100% of what we need to know, but I would, um, again, um, caution us not to be hasty, but to see as many voices as we can have in um, a situation as complicated as this one. But thank you again. Thank you, uh, Deborah. Um, thank you. So, I mean, me first, I just want to thank uh, the families, obviously, for, for coming together and writing that letter that was very brave of them. Um, because, you know, we know how intimidating um, standing up and, and, and sharing um, what transpired um, with the police as, you know, as they reminded us, two armed police people showed up and, um, you know, and put and, and had the young people sitting down on the pavement like they were on a lineup, you know, and, and sending those messages of intimidation and power and, and sending that message of powerlessness. So I want to commend these parents for being brave to, 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 to share, you know, their stories. And I want to invite them, you know, obviously with us being supportive and obviously, you know, they're writing this to the Human Rights Commission because last time that's what we determined, right, would be the place to go. Um, but you are, you are right, Freke. I mean, the, that, that report needs to be updated. But even though I don't even know what the point of that report is, though, I mean, Maybe the police report needs to be updated or whatever, because, you know, again, that report for me is neither here nor there. Uh, I don't even know what the function of that report was, but to, again, kind of exonerate the police. So, um, 
So my thing with this though is, you know, we, we, we've heard from them, you know, I, I hear you, Freke, we still need to hear, you know, from others if they feel safe to do so. We cannot, we cannot just say that we need to hear from the other four. Maybe the other four don't feel safe to come forward. Maybe they feel like they're going to get penalized or they're going to get uh, targeted further in this town, which can end up happening. So we can't wait until the other four to come forward, you know, before we act. We need to act, you know, even with this. So the town can act with what they stated, especially in terms of providing resources and support for these families and young people that are already suffering. Thank you. Ms. Pat. Thank you, Deborah, and thank you, Freke. Um, for me, because I have intimate information and some, most, some of the families, I think, for those who were able to put this together, I have great admiration for them. It doesn't matter if it's one or two parents that wrote. I think we need to honor that. And I think that, um, to me, that's sufficient. We don't know the reasons why other parents don't want to, but it could be that they're exhausted, they're afraid. You know, to insist to have all the night parents is re-victimizing re all the kids. Why do we need to hear from nine of them? Maybe they don't want to they, um, for whatever reason. It's very distressing to feel like because we don't have all the night people, maybe uh, we're not ready yet to move forward. Maybe, you know, they're not, you know, it's not the right time for them to do it. Maybe they will do it in the future. Please, please, for the sake of humanity, empathy. These families who have gathered courage to put this, we need to move forward to have the APD, Combine the whole thing, report from Human Rights Commission, everything. We need an update. And these kids need to heal and their family and the town needs to pay up, period. In order for our town to heal individual kids and their families, they need to heal first. When we're talking about healing, it starts with the victims first. When they're healed, then the town can then heal. Without that, it's not going to happen. We can talk as much as we want. If we don't, you know, make, you know uh, this, if we don't show support for these youth and their families, anything we are doing is just window dressing. It's all talk, talk. I don't believe in too much talk, talk, talk. People who know me know that part like action. You know, let's act, let's keep moving. That's what, that's how CSWG was highly effective. Action, action, we need to get stuff going, not talk, talk, talk. We don't have time for that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think it's important that we center BIPOC voices and these youth. What we have learned from the past two years with CSWG, the research with, with my group and then the outside group that was also brought in is that people, people of color, people where English is not the first language, where people don't have the, the legal um, uh, citizenship of, to protect them, they don't feel safe here. We have that from um, qualitative research. We have it from, uh, you know, we can bring anecdotal evidence and just conversations, but we have this instance where it was fully demonstrated, dramatized. And when you see the makeup of the Amherst Nine, it's actually a, a microcosm of our youth here. There's, what is it, 20 some odd percent now of uh, BIPOC youth in the school district. It has grown tremendously. That's where our diversity is. And it seems that our police force 
and the town has not caught up with the needs and the issues and the and the distrust so the healing goes back to the healing that people of color in this community live with on a daily basis and this was but one instance there are a couple of youth in this group that i also know um this is this has happened not just once but a couple of times three times so this isn't something like oh it was a one off incident this is happening to these youth as they grow up in this community continually so Frankie, before we get to you um philip Philip, you had your hand up. Sorry, I was talking and not been muted. I don't yeah. have any down, I guess. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I just want to say thank you, Ms. Pat, for having a connection. So are you with um can I not be am I here? We can't hear you. You're going in and out a little bit. That's weird. Can you hear me now or no? That's better. Okay. I want to say thank you, Ms. Pat, for having the connection with the families and the youth. Really appreciate that. And I want to say thank you to the families for writing this letter and coming out. And as co-chair of the Human Rights Commission, definitely welcome the letter and will be able to extend further in an investigational standpoint with what transpired and how we can push APD and other related town organizations into a further investigation than what's currently being done. Um, I would say, and I don't know if there's time for any in of the letter to be edited or not, if we could get more on what the perspective of the children's understanding of being told you have no rights and being detained and not being able to call parents. That also is important information to investigate on as well to say, hey, this is coming from the horse's mouth. This is how they felt in that moment. No one else can create that narrative or speak on that other than what is felt by the youth. And if we have that in writing and have that to be able to be pushed, I think would also be important. I greatly appreciate what is done. I am just simply giving more to just say, if that was in writing, I think that would be helpful as well. I agree, Philip, you know, knowing what they, what they felt at, at that moment, not to re-traumatize them, but oh. to at least get a sense of what was happening and how they felt. Thank you. Frankie. Um, thank you, Philip, for your perspective. Um, I don't think anything I said um, was was intended to push those who didn't want to speak to speak. I was simply pointing to the fact that if you have nine people and five speak, um, it can't be supposed that the five are speaking for those who haven't spoken. That's um, what I just wanted to mention. And that leaves room then to consider if there is an additional perspective. And there are a lot of reasons why that perspective might be missing. And there are reasons, numerous reasons why um, those orders might keep silent. Um, and I think we can all respect um, whoever chooses to do so. But I just want to clarify if um, it ever came across as I um, wanted it to be unanimity with the nine, that's not my intention, but simply we need a broader picture. Thanks. Appreciate that. Okay, so um, then on that, we're talking about the victim um, 
victim funds, it sounds like Jen has given us some, some information that uh, Pam Young is investigating um, possibility of, of how to do that, how to set that up because she uh, did that in Springfield, you said? Did I, I hear that correctly? She did do that in Springfield. And okay. so she would be a good resource for those perspectives, you know, for that. Okay. So that's something that, you know, in our memo, <laughs> um, I have like, uh, four different things uh, to, to send memos about, but um, to ask and inquire about how something like that might be uh, set up, um, including the 500,000 uh, in mental health uh, that was ARPA funds. And then you're saying, Ms. Pat, but there's al also the 2 million that has not been spent. Okay. Yes, there is, yeah. Okay. And I hope the two million that has not been spent, some of them can go to us, our retailers and restaurant owners in town. Yes. Okay. And do you know when you talk about two two million that hasn't been spent, that's not specifically in <coughs> in ARPA funds. Are those it part is, of the? It is an ARPA fund. It's the, uh, I'm assuming it would be second round. What we okay. the, the nine million plus is first round funding so there is two million okay. left so you know says jc you know she'll request to put a, a pause on that so that uh, our group can recommend to the town and the town council what the rest of the two million could be allocated for great thank you because i i know that there's also um quite a bit in the miscellaneous funds uh in the town that, that that bills each year, there's this miscellaneous pot of funds that, um, you know, <laughs> sometimes free doesn't cash? get spent Are you talking down. about free cash? Um, I don't know if it's, cash? I don't know if it's called free cash. I know that it's, it's listed under miscellaneous. So I don't know if Jen has a quality, uh, can clarify, or we just need to get some more clarification, but that's something we can look at in terms of the, the larger budget, just where that's coming from. That's enough for me to, to say, okay, in the memo, this is 2 million in the ARPA funds. Anything else? We are now um, at the end of our agenda here. Um, yeah, hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, Deb, yes. Yeah, I mean, I think just to, uh, and you probably already have that, but just like, you know, what we had discussed in terms of asking the town manager, whomever, in terms of emergency funds or what funds to to, to give the money to um, the families so that we can make sure to do that. And then in terms of the victim compensation, in terms of maybe a way to go, Ms. Pat, might be, since Pamela already had worked in that, maybe she could kind of present something to us at the next meeting. Um, and then we could kind of start there as opposed to us maybe, you know, trying to recreate the wheel if she has that information. Maybe we can start with her and then go from there. So that would be the, uh, an agenda item you're suggesting yes. for next time to talk well, um, because ask her about uh, victim compensation funds? Yeah, exactly. That and obviously, you know, next time to a report from DEI, right, about all the mm -hmm. other issues, anything else they want to update us on. But yeah, the victim compensation would be something we'd want included in the report. Okay. All right. So now we're, thank you. So um, I real quick, I can tell you what we've covered here. Um, so ARPA funds, um, to inquire about the ARPA funds and um, the use of funds to businesses in general to get an actual report, how much, where did it go, uh, and to whom, because it was not uh, obviously uh, dispersed to BIPOC businesses. We just wanted accounting of that. So that's one, like a report having to do with that. The other is, go ahead, is there clarification on that? Okay. Um, and then um, we're, of course, inquiring about the that five hundred thousand um, with the town manager specifically. Is that correct? 
we talked about, yes, that is, it would be specifically with the town manager. What is happening with that? What's the plans for that? We have some suggestions. One of them being, um, you know, uh, mental health uh, services, uh, specifically for the, the Amherst Nine. Um, so, and then the CDBG um, have DEI and, CRE and CRESS make requests for transportation for fully funding CRESS uh, for the BIPOC Center and the Youth Empowerment Center. Okay. I and just got then, thrown off with the transportation piece. Oh, you mean translation or did you say transportation? No, for vehicles. They, so, well, they have the funds for vehicles. Oh, they do. Okay. They're just, so, they're like back ordered. Okay. So we, all right. So we're because waiting of the process for them. that they're waiting okay. for them. All right. Good. So Translation would be good too. I don't know where that where that is, but I can simply replace that. Okay, and yeah, let's then, add that. Let's add that translation. I just I just added it. So um, and then make a request to the town manager about a grant writer. We need a grant writer, and to also include an assistant for DEI that there, there should be someone, um, you know, to do more of the, the scheduling, secretarial, uh, office manager type of things so they don't get in with too much. Um, okay, and then, uh, <coughs> well, we already did the ARPA funds. We, well, we would like a report from Sean McConnell. I don't know. Are we going to submit questions? It was suggested that we submit questions to Sean Magano um, pertaining to uh, the, you know, again, how ARPA funds are, are being used. Is that something we want to pursue? Yes. And is that something that to not violate meeting law, we should all send our questions only to Jen and the co-chairs or just to Jen and Jen can compile them or so to Jen today I thought we already I thought we already had the questions today we only focused on business community um I have questions with other fun funding oh too. with other funding. for clarifications yeah I have lots of questions okay so send our <laughs> questions to Jen and Jen yeah. do we have can, deadline yeah can Jen compile all the questions and then just send the list to the whole committee or is that violating the meeting law? No, I will compile them and then send them to you guys so that you can make sure that your question was answered. The only thing I would say is please don't reply all. And that they're not send duplicated. It if you have the corrections. Well, yeah, those are, that's why I would take those out, but. Can we set like deadline? We can send questions to Jen. So can we set a deadline for next Tuesday or Wednesday? And this is specifically having to do with the ARPA funds because CDBG is handled um, by someone else or, or would it be appropriate to also send to Sean Magano questions about no. CDBG? No. CDBG is fun. through the planning department. Right. So just so simply to do with with ARPA, and if you check out all those links that were sent, you can actually see um, on it gives you a snapshot of the reports and different things like that. So um, send your questions to Jen. Let's go ahead and set that um, by Tuesday. Is that reasonable for everyone? Okay. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, and to ask about the two million, and we're asking about the two million to, to the, the town, town manager. manager. To the yeah. town manager. Can okay. I go back to uh, to finance director? Uh, do we need to let him know when we would like to hear back from him, or do we expect his response to be part of the packet in in our next meeting? I Is would think so. I mean. He's usually, he can usually, you know, 
this is his wheelhouse, so he can usually respond pretty quickly to okay. things. Okay. So, I, so I think then it's important to have him in by Tuesday so that uh, he'll spend some time on the questions and send the the responses in a report for the next meeting. But and I will just as soon as I have them, I will just send the responses. I'll just send them to you guys. I won't. Great. It doesn't have to go out in the packet. I'll send okay. them to, directly to you. Cool. 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 Um, anything else to add to that? I'll just okay. email Pat DeAngelis about the, um, the, I'll forward her the email that I sent to Lynn so that that can get on the town council agenda for the yes. liaison report. Yes, I'm, thank I'm you. I'm speaking it out loud so I remember. <laughs> I covered a lot of ground and sometimes if I don't, if I don't write things down and wrap things up, it loses. Agreed, agreed. Okay, so um, next agenda. Next agenda will uh, encompass um, the police. Hopefully we'll have more of an accounting from the police um, having to do with the July 5th incident. Um, I wanted to report on post and I'll, I'll just do a short presentation and post is simply, <coughs> excuse me, um, the new guidance that was um, uh, created by the state having to do with um, policing. Uh, part of it involves um, how to interact with youth. And so it also involves how to uh, post a complaint using uh, the post guidelines on a state level. And from um, what I understand or what I've seen, the, our local police, they are not necessarily using these new state guidelines. So um, I'd like to make a presentation on that. It, it won't be very long because you could read up on it, but I just want to hit kind of the, the important points and how it relates to this incident, how it could have been used uh, constructively. What else to uh, go on the agenda for next meeting? Pat. So, um... In our last meeting, um, I believe we um, we asked the DEI director to make presentation on her proposal for the timeline for the resident oversight board. I think she's planning to do that uh, yeah. in another meeting, not this one. So if we can put her in the agenda. Okay. So DEI um, timeline on uh, on Rob or resident oversight board. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, as well as the other stuff, right? You put it, the victim compensation. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, that's already on there. It's on there. So victim it, compensation, hold up. And and you said something else, Deborah. And what no, else? Just, a re, just a report from, you know, what the DI has been up to. Um, oh, yeah. And, and, just... then, and then how, in, and then her report, I'm still kind of confused about that report she wrote about the police. And so now with this new information, so what's going to happen? She is she going to update that report? Is she not? I mean, what what? Because okay. that 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 report was really confusing. So we need any clarification on that. Okay. All right. So one um, more one more last thing is for me it's not an agenda item, but there is a group of youth who are planning know your rights training. Is it something the town should join? And this this our school districts should collaborate with this group. Um, I know we run out of time tonight, but they're planning to, to sponsor that. So I met Sunrise. Okay. So Philip? Yeah, I'm just about to jump in. You know, the Human Rights Commission just um, received an email about that earlier, so we can still sponsor on that. And, well, um, in the meeting, and I got an email response on that, and they're looking for Yes, that's JC also to hopefully co-sponsor that event. And I think that the Human Rights Commission is trying to do a series of Know Your Rights workshops as well, too. Right. So that's great to, to, to know that the town bodies 
you know, we'll be um, collaborating with Amazon Rice. That's wonderful. Okay. And so what a Cress, a report from Cress? Yeah. And I would like specifically information about um, the noise complaint. And I understand that there's nuance in that, but I think that, you know, what I read in the newspaper is that you know, their crest isn't going to respond because they don't want to, they can't issue fines. And I think that's great. I don't think crest should be issuing fines. That's punitive. But I also think that that shouldn't be the go-to only response that we can have to a noise complaint. We're reimagining public safety. So what else can we do rather than just have the town get some money and not repair whatever harm the person who called the noise complaint might have and the person who is then being policed um, might feel. So I think I would like right. to hear more about how that decision was arrived at specifically, as well as just kind of a general update as, as to the rollout. And um, there was one other thing. I know we talked about streetlights. That was the, the other thing that was brought up at the last meeting um, and the equity around how they're deciding when and where to place streetlights and when and where to take streetlights away. Um, maybe I'll look into when that's going to whatever town committee it has to go to next to see if that's something that can be on a different agenda or if that's something that's being discussed by the town. Yeah, this is a hefty agenda. I wouldn't necessarily, if you yeah, can not add anything else, that might yeah. be good, but that's a hefty agenda right there. Yeah. But but it does bring up uh, something that I think is the uh, within the purview of the CSSJC. Um, we need some type of list or clarification, even if it's being created while Cress is on ramping. Uh, this is what Cress handles, and this is what is appropriate for APD. Because I've been asked by uh, someone in transportation uh, on the trans transportation committee, I guess, I don't know what it's called, <laughs> but for the town, does um, uh, having to do with sidewalks and complaints about, you know, sidewalks and people not shoveling their walk or people um, having, um, you know, uh, blocked areas on their sidewalk for, for people unable to, you know, walk around it or whatever, you know, who handles those types of complaints. Obviously, you know, we hope that those are non-threatening, non-violent type of situations, but is that appropriate for Cress? Is that appropriate for APD? Because there could be a fine involved. And again, as Allegra says, if we're reimagining public safety, um, couldn't that be something under the purview of Cress? So I would like some type of listing as Cress is, is on ramping here, trying to figure out what is appropriate for them, what is appropriate for APD, that type of thing. So I don't know if we'll get answers <laughs> this meeting, but eventually I'd, I'd like to see that. If there's anything else uh, <clears throat> in terms of, um, you know, uh, it's, it looks pretty hefty, but if there's something else to add, send it to Jen uh, to add to um, the agenda. Um, Any, I, yes. I just wanted to point out that Anna Devlin Gautier wrote in the chat um, that she was one of the co-sponsors of the streetlights proposal and it's going to town services and outreach so I can reach out to her about a little bit more information and timelines and um and I know we are beyond time but I did say at the beginning of the meeting that we would reopen for public comment at the end of the meeting and I want to um, make sure that I hold my word um so there Absolutely. are six attendees if anyone wants to make a public comment is that appropriate. Yes, it looks like we have one hand up. So how do we 
Are you going to get them in the room, Jen, or? There we go. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, this is Vera Duangmini Cage. I live at um, 12 Longmeadow Drive, apartment 21 in Amherst. And I just wanted to comment on the discussion that you folks had about the CDBG funds and grant writing and all that. And I just wanted to say that, you know, I've been very curious about what gets funded in this town under that because it is meant to really serve um, underserved communities, right? And, you know, I, I just thought, you know, sometimes the town will use it to do, for example, pave Main Street. And, um, and Main Street is used by everybody, right? Um, and they're able to say, we'll use CDBG funds to pave Main Street um, because there are low-income apartment complexes that, um, that sit on Main Street. For example, when the Amherst 9 incident took place at an apartment complex off Main Street. So, you know, let's really think about the irony of that um, and how our how CDBG funds and other funds are being used um, to materially benefit um, everyone um, and how much is it really specifically meant to uplift communities that really need it, right? Um, and so, so I just want to um, leave you with that. And also, you know, um, it's people who make you know, six figure salaries in the town, $90,000 salaries in the town. Um, they're the ones on behalf of the town um, that are also submitting these proposals for CDBG um, funding requests. So Dave Zalmack, for example, right, has written um, on behalf of the town to get money um, to tap into CDBG funds. There are other people who are already employed in the town that that are doing this work of writing um, proposals and obtaining grants. So, uh, so it is something that we need to think about. Um, and, and so I, I'll just, that, that'll be my public comment for this evening. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, if there's no one else. Any other topics the either chair <laughs> did not reasonably anticipate, anticipate 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Okay. So does someone want to make uh, a motion to adjourn? I just have uh, one last comment to make. Oh, yes. So I want to thank everybody for the active, you know, discussion on our tax dollar, who is benefiting more. It took you all courage to speak your truth. And because we, we are talking about powerful people in this town. And I thank you all. I know this work is not easy. I know, you know, people will come after you. Develop thick skin. I'm sure that's why you're, you're serving here. You're here, just remember what your legacy will be. Did you help move Ames, you know, to, to a better place? to so the next generation. So I wanna thank you. This is a difficult discussion, but let's keep looking who is benefiting more most in this town and then using BIPOC as um, leverage saying, oh, this will benefit marginalized people, but when you dig deep, who is really benefiting from it? So I thank you all for tonight's discussion. I feel very encouraged, even when we disagree. It's necessary and that's why we have this group. You know what is good about this is you have majority BIPOC people 
you know, besides CSWG for the first time in this town, bringing a different narrative of how we want the town that we also live um, to contribute to how, you know, we would like it to be and not what it has always been. So we need to continue to do this work and be bold and be courageous. People will come after you, but that's okay because you're doing the right thing. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Agreed. All right, anyone wants to make a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, all in favor? Bye. Bye. See, see you next time. Can Thank you just you call the is, time, please? I need time. a time. Oh, wait, um, when, is, when is the next meeting, actually? The 22nd, is it? I thought it was the 28th. <laughs> okay. That's another it's two meeting. Wednesdays, on the two Wednesdays from today. Yes. So the 28th. That's 20, 21st. That's the 21st. Oh, so well, did you all mean the 21st or did you all mean the 28th? I have the 28th. Wait, Philip is trying to say something about the Human Rights Commission meeting and it's hard to hear. This is on the 21st. So that's why we're the 28th. Wait, what? Uh, can't hear you. Try again. The Human Rights Commission meets on the 21st, and that's why you guys decided to meet oh, on uh, the 28th. Okay. That's true. That's true. Thank right. you. The 28th, 6 o'clock, right? Okay. Got it. Thank okay. You. So the meeting has been called at 847. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank See you, you then. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.